fourth quarter science for module 6 shadow formation the sun is the center of the solar system plays an important role in all living and non-living things on earth it serves as the major source of light and heat that without it the earth would be in total darkness and would become a huge refrigerator due to the drop in its temperature in this module you will learn more information and understand the importance of the sun as the source of important energy like heat and light have you ever wondered why objects around you and other living things form their shadows? This module will also engage you in understanding shadow formation. Read and enjoy learning about this great and amazing science concept. But before that, let's have a short review. Select inside the parentheses the appropriate safety precautions in the given sets of weather conditions and the correct explanation. Encircle your choice. Number 1. Use umbrella or jacket during sunny or rainy days to avoid getting swept or sunburned. Okay 2. When outside during stormy or sunny days, wear sunglasses or eyeglasses to protect or support the eyes. 3. Stay indoor or outdoor during sunny or stormy days to avoid possible damage or benefits of storm winds. 4. The family plans to go swimming or camping in the month of May or September and would bring with them swimmer or repellent. Now, compare your answer. Do you get all the numbers right? Okay, very good. We can now proceed to activity number one. Is sun important? In this activity, we will discuss the importance of the sun as a source of heat and light. For activity number one, part one, study the picture below and write SH if the sun serves as the source of heat and SL if the sun serves as source of light. Okay, for activity number one, part two, study the situations below and put check in the appropriate column if it is because of the sun's heat or light. The sun is very important to both living and non-living things. It provides heat to keep things warm and light for plants to produce food. Human use heat from the sun to dry things, see color in our surroundings or environment, reading and drawing are some activities that we cannot do without light. Can you name other activities that you cannot do without the light or heat from the sun? Okay, very good. Now let us proceed to activity number two, shadows, house, and whys. In this activity, we will discuss and describe how and why shadows are formed. Materials needed Flashlight, notebook, plastic cover, pencil, glass, spoon, colored plastic container, can, and clear food container. Okay, place the flashlight in a stool or table and point its light to the wall. Describe the light on the wall. Block the light coming from the flashlight using different materials. 
observe what happens to the lights on the wall. Now let's try this notebook. Notebook is an opaque object. Light cannot pass through an opaque object, that's why it's form shadow. Next, clear plastic cover. Wow, this plastic cover is transparent, that's why light can pass freely through it. How about pencil? As we can see, it forms shadow. Because pencil is opaque, light cannot pass through it. Let's try this glass. It appears translucent because of its thickness and design. Some light passes through translucent objects. Spoon also is an opaque object. Light cannot pass through it. That's why it's form a shadow. As we can see, colored plastic container is also opaque, that's why it forms a shadow. How about this can boot? As we can see, light cannot pass through this can because it is opaque object. It forms a shadow. Clear plastic container is translucent. Some light can pass through it. It forms some shadow but not dark shadow. You can now record your observation in the observation table. Okay, now let's try to answer the guide questions. 1. What materials allow light to pass through? 2. What materials allow some light to pass through? 3. What materials did not allow light to pass through? And number 4. What was formed on the wall when the light was blocked by an object? Describe the image. Light always travel in a straight line. Transparent objects allow almost all light to pass through. Translucent materials allow some light to pass through. And opaque objects block the light forming dark image called shadow. Now let's move on to activity 3, shadow and the position of the sun. In this activity, you will relate the position of the sun with the length of shadow. You need flashlight and mug in this activity. First, place the mug on the table and position the flashlight by imitating the position of the sun during the day. Okay, at sunrise or zero degrees. At around 10 o'clock in the morning or 45 degrees acute angle. Ninety degrees or right angle, twelve o'clock noon. One 
135 degrees or of truth angle at around 2 p.m. During sunset, 180 degrees. Observe the shadow. Record your observation by drawing the image of the shadow and describing it. To further deepen our understanding, let's answer the guide questions. 1. What position of flashlight resembles the sunrise? Noonday? How about the sunset? 2. Which position of the flashlight produces the longest shadow? How about the shortest shadow? How does the position of the flashlight affect the length of the shadow? Shadows are affected by the position of the source of light. The sun does not change its position but it is the Earth's rotation and revolution that cause the apparent changes in the position of the sun. Okay, now let us proceed to the last activity. Activity number 4, My Shadow. You will describe the shadow formed at certain times of the day. To perform this activity, you need to choose an area where your whole body can receive sunlight. Do this activity at the following time, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning, and 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Let someone trace your shadow. Do it again at 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock in the morning. Do the same procedures at 2, 3, and 4 in the afternoon. Now, answer the guide questions. 1. How will you describe your shadow at around 8 o'clock in the morning? 2. What happens to your shadow as it approaches noon time? What is the relationship of the position of the sun with the length of the shadow? And number four, if you are to measure your shadow at 1 in the afternoon, how will you compare it with your shadow at 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Wow, we are done with the activities! Let us now check your understanding. Write fact if the statement is true and bluff if it is false. Underline the word words that makes the statement false. Okay, now compare your answer. Do you get all the numbers right? Wow, very good! I know you are now ready to answer the post -test. Enjoy learning!